Um, the next song is, it's a lament about not lamenting. Let me explain what I mean. Um, over half the psalms are what we call lament. And when the psalmist turns to God and says, Lord, this is wrong and that's wrong and, and, and where are you? And, and says these things to the Lord that you read and you go, I can't believe he just said that. And he did. And God has put them in his word. And I mentioned a second ago that my mentor is Michael Card. I travel with him on the road. If you don't know who that is, he's the guy that wrote El Shaddai. Great, great guy. And uh, I still remember the morning on the bus. Um, he walked in from the back, and I guess he'd been spending some time with the Lord, and he said, well, I know what my next album's supposed to be. It's supposed to be on Lament. And I paraphrase of what I thought was, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> and uh, man, the Lord teaches you what you're writing about and what you're singing about at times. Over the next uh, course of a couple of years, I mean, I had the broken engagement. We had a bus crash and other things that I can't go into. It was a hard, hard couple of years. Um, but what came out of that was uh, he ended up writing two books and doing an album uh, on Lament. And I, he calls it the missing piece of worship, and I think he's right. I remember being in a, a church service, and uh, there was a young man leading the singing, and he got up there with his tie and electric guitar, and he was just sort of bebopping along, singing praise song after praise song of joy, happy, happy, joy, joy. And that's good. There's a place for that. I'm not knocking that. I'm not making fun of it. But here he was, happy, happy, joy, joy, happy, happy, joy, joy, all the way through. And I sat there thinking, where is the song for the guy that just got laid off from his job and doesn't know how he's going to pay the bills? Where's the song for the woman who just had a miscarriage and she and her family are trying to cope with this? Where's the song for the guy that just got served divorce papers and he doesn't want the divorce? Where's that song? And right before the pastor of the church got up to preach, this old gentleman in his old uh, suit and tie got up and walked up, picked up this old weathered Gibson and started singing one of the hymns. I don't remember which one it was. I wish I did. But he started singing and he sounded like Hank Williams. <laughs> and I thought, there's the song for the guy that just got laid off. There's the guy, the song for the guy, that, for the woman who just had a miscarriage. There's the song for the guy who just got served divorce papers. Amidst all of our joyful psalms, and there are joyful psalms that are just wah of praise to the Lord, but the way we get there a lot of times is to be honest about the hardships in our life and lament. Some people are afraid of lament, afraid that it's being disrespectful to the Lord. Now, I'm not talking about disrespect. You don't disrespect the Lord. But it's interesting that the Bible says in Hebrews that Jesus, in his time on earth in flesh, cried out with loud cries and tears, and he was heard because of his reverence. Did you get that? Jesus' loud cries and tears, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me, he says on the cross. His loud cries and tears are reverence. Now why is it reverence to take our complaints or our misunderstandings to the Lord? It's reverence because we're acknowledging that he's the only one who can do anything about it. Okay? And if you study lament, there's this structure where there, it's like a U-turn. <laughs> They're going, Lord, this is wrong and that's wrong and this is wrong and that's wrong and, and where are you? My enemies are, 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 are getting stronger and stronger. And then there's this turnaround of but you, O Lord, are faithful, but you, O Lord, are good. And it starts climbing back up. And it's called the Vav Adversative is what scholars call it. Sometimes you get there through the formula of remembrance. You look at the past and you remember what God's done. Other times maybe it's the psalmist realizes, wait a second, I'm still alive after everything I said. God must really love me. And he starts talking. Somehow that happens. I, I don't know how to put it into words, but somehow... And taking our complaints to the Lord, it turns into trust and love. Even in precatory psalms, where you're praying against your enemies, in my own life uh, one time, I, I remember there was a guy, I can't get into the details of the situation, but he was a bad dude. I mean, really, a criminal activity, bad guy. And somehow, in starting to pray for this guy and be honest about this, like, Lord, if, you're not gonna, if this guy's never going to come to know you, just take him out. Take him out right now. And praying those kind of prayers, somehow... It gets turned to, Lord, please bless this guy. <laughs> Help him come to know you. And it, and it turns around. And we don't know how to explain it, but it happens. Well, so here's what happens with lament. A lot of people don't lament because even if they know, I should back up, all of them turn around except one. There's one psalm that never turns around, Psalm 88. It basically says, Lord, everything stinks. The end. Now, why is that there? It's there to show that God does not want us to give him the silent treatment. Don't ever stop talking to God. He loves you, and even though he knows it all, he wants to hear it from your lips. He's in love with you. Don't ever stop talking to him. Um, one of the reasons people are afraid of lament, at least in my own life, I was, I was in a period where I realized there was something I needed to lament, and I hadn't. And I just didn't want to go there. I mean, 
I believed in lament. Hey, I know the guy that wrote two books on it. I believe in it, okay? But I knew it was going to wear me out. <laughs> I was going to be exhausted before I got to the turnaround of but you, O Lord, are faithful, but you, O Lord, are good. And the image that I think the Lord let pass through my mind was this, of a little kid that's on a camp out, and he's so scared of the dark that he pulls his sleeping bag up over his head. Well, guess what? It's just as dark underneath that sleeping bag as it is outside. But if he'd just pull that sleeping bag off his head, at least he'd have the light of the moon. It's the same way with lament. You may be scared of the knockdown drag out that lament is, but if you'll go ahead and do it, yank the covers off your head, at least there's the light of the moon, the, the turnaround of, but you, O Lord, are faithful, but you, O Lord, are good. And so that's what this song is about. The song is not as long as the introduction. Um, also, I should say for all the kids in the audience, I'm not cussing when I use the word dam. I'm talking about it like a beaver dam, a dam that holds back water. I just want to explain that right now. <laughs>